All right, everyone, thanks for joining us. We're joined here by Dynamo Head Coach Ben Olson. I'll get the ball rolling. If you guys have any questions, please use the raise my hand function. Ben, off to game two here shortly, off to Utah. How's the team navigate the preparations for that match? Uh, it's more, more of a thing. We play the same opponent, so we're obviously familiar with them. Played them what, four times this year already, and, and now we have another one. So uh, I don't think there's a lot of secrets between the two teams um, other than who they play. They, they've you know, clear they've had some injuries and uh, some, some key players uh, will be coming back from, from, from their end. And, and we'll have to, again, make sure we understand um, who they are and, and what they bring to the table. But again, we've seen some of those guys throughout the year. So I'm just looking forward to it, uh, getting another match. It's been a, a long seven, eight days in between uh, last match and this one, and, and we're, we're ready to go again. Thank you for that. Let's start with Jesus. Go ahead, Jesus. Hey, Coach. Um, uh, when you rewatched the game, what were some of the immediate things that jumped out at you that you didn't catch when you were actually coaching the game? It was a little better than I thought, uh, but there's still uh, some moments on both sides of the ball that uh, we need to Im improve on. And again, some of it's decision-making uh, in the offensive end. Uh, Again, I, I don't want to get too specific right, right. with you. Um, and then, you know, defensively, they, they were very dangerous and, and making sure we're clear on how to go about dealing with the transition moments, <clears throat> having a little bit more balance and, and more discipline structure as, as we attack. So decision-making and the attacking side of it. And then um, being a little bit uh, more dialed in uh, off the ball because of the way they set up in the first half. I think it lulled us into uh, a, a sleepier state uh, when the ball turned over. And that's just not acceptable. And, and there was a, a, a very good coach, uh, particularly in the playoffs. And uh, they, uh, this is going to be a very tough pass going there in, in Salt Lake. Your energy is going to be, um, uh, 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 it's it's a great venue and, and they, they, the city shows up for them a little bit colder and and, it, and they're, they're they need to win this game so it, it's going to be a, a great challenge for us to see if we can go and get something uh in a, in a tough place uh you were mentioning how difficult you know it is to make tweaks because you know you faced this team already four times and it's a three-game series how much of a challenge and, and even perhaps a fun challenge is it for you and your coaching staff to try and find tweaks that you can perhaps surprise RSL with? Yeah, no, we we are who we are for the most part. Um, I don't think, again, we're going to surprise them with any any crazy tactical schemes. <laughs> um, you know, we, uh, but what we do when we do it well is it's, it's pretty good and it's hard, it's hard to deal with. So I think we just have to focus on being at our best and, and uh, making sure if, you know, just like any other opponent, if they take away one area and they want to focus on dealing with uh, trying to stop, you know, A, that we have B to hurt them. If they want to try to A, B, then we, we have C to hurt them. So this is still kind of how we go about the, the, the games and um, within the battles of the tactical you know, solutions, but that they'll bring, um, yeah, well, those are the adjustments that, you know, you, you have to think about for, uh, beforehand, but off, also during the game. So that is, as you said, the, 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 the fun part of these kind of three game series. Thank you, coach. Up next, we'll go with Al. Al, go ahead. Uh, hey, coach. Uh, they say it's hard to beat a team three times in one season. You guys already did that. How hard would it be to beat them the fourth time? It's hard to beat a team twice, three times, right? Yes. And this will be the toughest challenge uh, because uh, I think they're going to be uh, healthier and they're going to have some personnel back that are uh, make them better, no doubt. 
So this will probably be the one of they'll have their quote unquote first team ish available, and then they can kind of play, you know, uh, in in a way that they're they're used to and with high energy and, and, a, and a great building and a, a tough taste to play. So we're under no illusions that this will be a very difficult task, but we we've. We have in the past, as you said, uh, the two with the, the win against Salt Lake there, the win against Miami in the Open Cup final. And we've been able to pull off some of these results on the road that are, are, are tough places to go. So hopefully we have that but uh, that mentality and, and the work rate and, and luck to get that accomplished. Uh how much have you guys thought about the uh, attitude over there and just the things that are out of your control? The attitude? Uh, altitude. We played there already this year, so we, we know it. It does change the flight of the ball, and, and you get a little dry mouth early from, uh, from the, the kind of oxygen, but it's it's not that big a deal. No, uh, it, it Colorado seems to be, for whatever reason, a little bit. Salt Lake is, uh, yeah, it's they have a home field advantage, no doubt. With the altitude and, and you know, the flight of the ball being a little bit different, but you know, we we have the heat and we have some of you know our our tricks here at Shell Energy. So that's just part of going away. You know, sometimes it's turf, sometimes it's altitude, sometimes it's travel. It's a difficult league to go away. But every team has their their advantages, and certainly those are those are some of it. But in the end, it's still a soccer game. It doesn't prevent us from working hard and doing what we can what we can do uh, on the field. Uh, thanks, coach. Rudy, go ahead. Hey, coach. I know it's. Uh... You mentioned a little bit about them getting a little healthy. Uh, obviously, last game, a uh, big key player out was Chicho Arango. Um, not necessarily going into, you know, the game plan that you had before and, and, and now, obviously, going on for Monday's game. But how, how do you approach just, you know, having those big changes when it comes to those, I guess, big stars coming into to their first team again? You just make sure your team's – clear on who he is and how they he, he makes them different. Uh, so, it, again, it's, none of this is different than what we do all year. He, if if he's back in the line, which we expect him to be because he's a, a big-time scorer and a real handful, uh, then we just have to make sure we understand who he is and what, what he does for the team and what his strengths are and, and where maybe we can um, we can do a good job on. And so again, nothing from, from a preparation standpoint. I you know the games mean more, and, and it's, it's playoff time. But really, it's business as usual here, and how we prepare for teams. Uh, so we'll, we'll we'll go about it in that way. And we we expected him to play in the, in the last game. We didn't know, so we we did a lot of work on uh, some of these players that didn't play. So. Uh, there won't be any surprises, I don't think, from 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 either team. But it's a uh, he's he certainly changes them in that they've uh, he's a real goal scorer and he's a he's a handful. Um, you mentioned earlier, just you know, you already know who you are as a team, and I believe it was maybe Griffin Dorsey that mentioned uh, that you guys know that you guys are pretty good in the first half for the most part, but have. A little bit of difficulty finishing all the games. How how can that be changed or tweak? You know, in this playoff system and you know, basically elimination games now. Well, I think we had some of that, but I don't, I don't know if that's been the biggest issue over the last couple months. Uh, seeing how games, I think overall we, we we've done well. There's one or two games we 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 let some goals in late. Uh, I, I'd say this, there's, you know, you can deal with it, understanding the game state uh, and what we need to do to see all games. And sometimes that's defensively, but that's also sometimes it's defense uh, offensively and, and, and taking care of the ball and, and making sure 
uh, that we make good decisions whether or not to go get the the second goal or the, uh, another goal or continuing to maintain possession and, and chew the other team's legs off. And uh, so th those are kind of some of the things that we, we talk about constantly and, and what the game state is and, and how who we are in that moment. And just being a little bit more disciplined um, and, and thoughtful about of seeing games out. Uh, that's, I guess, where, where I go with that answer. I don't think it's been that big of an issue, but uh, also teams are to later in the year and in playoffs and there's nothing to lose. So they just, you know, you just keep throwing players on. If you're in this format, there's definitely nothing to lose. Uh, that's the one kind of criticism I think you're hearing from a lot of people is it, it there's no aggregate, so you can just kind of – you can go. It doesn't really matter if you get hit the other way, uh, if you're desperate and you need to uh, get those goals back. So sometimes that's that's tough to defend. You can add you know, more players on. You can deal with a – you can put in a different structure to kind of help it. Um, sometimes the answer is go score another goal. And if their teams are that aggressive, they're going to be exposed. So you got to go stick the knife in the other way. So – Every game's a little bit different. Teams are keep putting attackers on. Sometimes you give up goals. Thanks, Coach. Best of luck on Monday. Thank you. Jesus, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, yeah, just a quick follow-up, Coach. Uh, one outside, outside of this game, you know, a couple of interviews back uh, during the Halloween time, you were mentioning – how this team, there's always such a good, fun vibe, you know, and that sometimes that fights against, you know, what what your what your nature is, you know. And I want to ask you over this season, what has this team taught you about head coaching and about, you know, leading this team? What have you learned from them? That's a good question. Well, if I had an answer at the moment, but it's a very, very good question. Um, because I do, I do think they've taught me uh, some things about you know myself and, and my leadership style and, and they've changed me in in in, uh, in some ways I think one of those ways is what, what you alluded to what maybe what I was speaking about then is uh, they've allowed me to enjoy this job more for some reason than I did I think the certainly the last couple of years in DC uh, part of that is uh, I'm energized and excited to be coaching again. And uh, I spoke very publicly about the last years in DC where my enthusiasm for coaching was, was fading away. And, and I think my energy levels dropped and that's a, that's a dangerous thing to have as a coach. Uh, but, you know, this has been a, a new, a new challenge for me and, and they've, they've gone about it with such joy and when they can go about it, with joy on the field and, and in the locker room and also when it's time to um, uh, perform on game day and, and flip, have be able to flip that switch uh, it, it's really it, it's been fun fun to to be around but I think that, that if, if there's been anything is that um, I, I, I need to sometimes trust these players and, and that they can um, um, enjoy this as well it's, uh, that wasn't always the case uh, before. Thank you, Coach. Good luck on Monday. Thank you. Thanks for jumping on, everyone. We're going to have media resources later today.